Once again, good morning and welcome to this past buffet. My name is Idafi Matu. I'm going to have got with me Joseph Okiche. Uh, the beautiful thing about what we're doing today is uh, like we normally do, we've had like just about everybody on this show uh, from Judo Joy Galo to Sheyolof in Jana to Ifitobori Soji, Akbo Soji, Duke Udi, Martin Tyler, Ganot Raw, and the rest of them. So there's this guy that I'd be like, I want to talk to him. There's something about him that I like. You know, like, you, if you guys follow me on the show, you know that I'm a sucker for intelligent people. Brilliant people always attract me, age, creed, or whatever they are. So, I was like, I went to first person. I like, ah, do you have uh, iOS number? I'm like, iOS is a mind your business kind of person. I don't think he would want to do radio. And I was like, I don't care what I is a mind your business. Let him tell me with his mouth. Don't come here and give me that crap. It's like, okay. And then the person didn't get back to me. Somebody else, the third person, the fourth person, and then eventually Mr. Boyega, nice friend, great guy, is an intermediary, one you can trust. And we'll talk about all of that on the show. And I spoke to him, I said, do you have any relationship with uh, Ayodele Makinwa? Because I want to understand why he is the Tiger of Lagos and another egg of ours, Mr. Taigi, is also the Tiger of Lagos. Is he the son of Mr. Taigi? I mean, you never can tell. Let's get to know where this whole thing comes from. And there's so many other things we need to talk about. Why did he choose to go to China when he went to China? Uh, I mean, he moved from uh, FC Bede to Regina and Italy, all those Lazio things. You know what happened. And some of those things about our national team we need to talk about. So, I'm talking about no other person than the Tiger of Lagos. Mr. Steven Ayodele Makinwa, former Super Eagles player, former Lazio, um, Como, Regina, Atalanta, just to name a few clubs that he played for. And um, I, I think we're going to have a good time. Joseph, are you are you up for it? Ah, uh, very up for it. Uh, <laughs> watching him, you know, play for the Super Eagles while growing up, uh, this is a very good time. <laughs> so you <laughs> blushing. Why are you blushing? <laughs> uh, Mr. Ayodele Makinwa, you're welcome to the show this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, such a wonderful presentation. Uh, I don't know if I deserve it, but <laughs> but thank you so much. You always you so always not deserving anything. So I was saying, <laughs> sir, I was saying, sir, to him, we're having a conversation. He said, like, I don't like this, sir. Just come be bro. I was like, okay, but officially, I have to say, <laughs> sir, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, bro, uh, let's have the co- let's hit the conversation running, and I'm going to yes. start. You did not, did you at any time or did any of your family member work as a hunter or work in a zoo? <laughs> Where did the tiger of Lagos come from? <laughs> so, um, the tiger of Lagos was, um, so I've been in um, Modena, I think that was in uh, 2003. Yeah, so uh, you know, so during the games, during the matches. Uh, the the commentator was always you know calling me the La Pantera de Lagos, you know. So I think as soon as you know, once they have a new player in the in the in the club, they will always give that person a nickname, you know. So the commentator just came up with that, that you know the Pantera of Lagos. I think it was it was just looking at my speed, you know. Uh, then he thought of you know me being the Pantera of Lagos, but then. You know, uh, I think it was interpreted to be the Tiger of Lagos, you know, f- uh, by our uh, Nigerian uh, uh, journalists. You know, so I think that was how the, ca- the name came about. And it does, it does sound, it does sound. The first time I heard that word, I heard it from the mouth of uh, Uncle Biba Adiola, the Tiger of Lagos. I was like, hey, wait a minute. You know, I grew up in Warri and Portacourt, and I don't hear journalists, you know, talk people like that. And and I start hearing mm-hmm. Christian Obodu, a bundle of skills. Uh, oh, yeah. Papa Martin's <laughs> weapon of mass destruction. Uh, there's some players that have Yacuba some Yacuba 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 Yacuba. <laughs> So I was like, okay, if I if I get to talk to these guys, I'll find out. Did they decide to call themselves that name? Or so now we know that. So let's move forward a bit. Talk to us yeah. about your journey. You didn't get to play in the Nigerian League apart from FCA BD. Having a young, yes. a young footballer, pretty young. You went to Europe when you were very young. Shy. Yes minding your own business even up to this very day not liking to talk not liking to mix up go to europe and find your footing culture change new type of food the language and everything how did it work for you well uh, um you know i think it was just something that uh, i wanted you know as a as a young uh, uh let me say aspiring player then you know i was hoping that one day 
I would, you know, uh, get a chance to play in Europe. You know, uh, we're a couple of friends that were always, you know, like together and, you know, well, we had the same dream, you know, <laughs> to play in Europe. So, yeah, I mean, um, I was playing with some local clubs in um, in uh, Suile, where I grew up, uh, I'm not answering, you know, so we're always training at the National Stadium. And then, uh, you know, gradually I was always uh, winning something, whatever I would play in the tournament, I was always winning something, you know, so I started believing in myself, you know, uh, and then uh, there was this time that we played against the uh, and they invited me to, to to should come back the next day, even though I was I was really sick. But uh, somebody just came to me and you know said I should please come and you know so it was the uh, barrister Churchill only said then that you know uh, uh, that is the president of the club. You know, so uh, we joined. I joined and then you know things are going well. We played in the I think I'm at two or two or three something like that. And I think uh, I, I was there for uh, almost a season or one season, you know. But then we won the league, and um, we and Martins were together then. We were playing in this um, uh, in FCB then. So uh, four of us, I think, before us, uh, another set of four, you know, traveled before us to Italy. So then uh, I think September year 2000 was our own uh, turn to travel. So we, we traveled, we were also four, me, Bartholomew Martin, and uh, two of our friends that, you know, unfortunately, uh, they did not make it then. So yeah, that was how we went there. Me and Martin were eventually selected. We, we, we stayed there and uh, we signed and uh, we started our our football career, you know, gradually. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy because, uh, of course, you know, going to a new place, we had to, to find a remember I had to buy this uh, dictionary, you know, just something to translate, uh, to, to be able to really express ourselves, you know, whenever we needed medicine, water, or anything, you know. So gradually, we're, we're just trying to, to help ourselves and um, yeah, luckily we had some help also because the people, the first set that went, uh, almost, or I think one of them stayed, they, they, they stayed, so uh, we were not just alone. So uh, there were these Nigerians also there, these guys, so they helped us also, also to, um, to attack, you know. So yeah, that was how we started, but uh, everybody's journey after a few months started, you know, um, uh, I was like, everybody started facing their own journeys, you know. So I eventually went out immediately to some uh, to another club, and um, yeah, I was mostly alone, you know. And but it was it was it was not that difficult because you know football at the end of the day is one language, you know. When you when you play football, you don't really have to talk. You understand, you know. So. It, Sometimes it's like a sign language, you know, we just say, hey, 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 you know. So it wasn't that bad, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, um, and then, you know, gradually I started working my, my way up to, to the top, top division. Uh, but I would say that it was not that difficult for me to adapt because, you know, it has always been a dream for me to, to play in Europe. And so once that happened, it was just like a dream come true and then I just had you know more reasons to keep working hard because I wanted to get to the top all right so uh, talking about um, finding it very easy to adapt let's talk about Obafemi Martins a bit he's one person mm. that I'm still struggling to interview uh, my all-time favorite mm. Nigerian player is Sondo Lise but one of my top mm. top attacker or top attacker is a buffet Martins. The way he's able to evolve, get into every team and become the center. Not like okay, coaches favor him, but it's just that guy. His speed, his eye for goal. At what point, uh, you know, from your days in a bit, at what point did you look at the buffet Martins and you feel like, man, this guy will be a great player? Well, I think immediately because uh, I mean his talents was definitely obvious, you know. So then I was me and him were the 
the striking force in the team and you know we would go anywhere to play against any club even sometimes uh, against all these professional clubs i think i remember we played against judas beggars of uh, in the challenge club we played against some um, you know, big clubs then you know and for us it was just like playing against any other club so uh, but he was just uh, special and you could see immediately that yeah this guy is just because whoever was in front of him he would just you know outpace the person easily so it was just everything was so easy for him and you would i mean i i, I noticed that immediately immediately okay so uh let's let's bring it on to how you made it to the national team a bit one of the things that people mm. complained about back in the day, I remember you would pick up a newspaper and they say, Oh, Makiwa is making the national team because he's a Lagos boy, the Lagos press are pushing him, blah blah blah. He doesn't score too many goals. How did you get your first national team call up? So I remember, um, so when I was playing in Modena, I was playing in Modena. So I got uh, several call-ups to the under-23, uh, but my club never allowed me to, you know, to to go because uh, we were, of course, was trying to survive relegation that season. And you know, okay, we were playing in Serie A, and then you know, under-23 matches then they were now in the uh, in the FIFA calendar. Uh, like that, you know, the clubs must allow you to go. So yeah. they, they could, they, they, they stopped me every time because it wasn't in the, it wasn't the, the first, the first team, and it wasn't in the FIFA calendar. So um, after, after that, in 2004, then I moved to Genoa, and then I got uh, the first call up to the Super Eagles, uh, uh, and that was. Uh, that we played, I think it was the Mandela Cup or something. It was obviously uh, a, a match, you know, uh, for Nelson Mandela. Then he was at the stadium, I could remember. And uh, yeah, that was my first match. And I remember I went to that match uh, alongside the Bathroom Martins. We traveled together to South Africa. And then yeah, and that was my that was my first match for the for the Nigerian Super Eagles State. Okay, so another another conversation that people always have today is oh I'm not playing for the national team because I don't have connection, uh there are nobody speaking to me, nobody to bribe the coaches. Was that a conversation in your time when you were playing? So I sometimes you know I'm not somebody like that, you know, it, it doesn't even come to my head that, you know, you have to give somebody anything. Uh, sincerely, in my own time, I never noticed anything like that because I think most people that were in the, in the, in, in the team then, they definitely, uh, I mean, they, they have every reason to be there, you know, we were all playing in good clubs and good leagues. You know, so um, for me, there was nothing like that, like, you know, happening then because uh, I was playing in uh, Serie A and um, I'm, I'm not the kind of uh, you do or die person. I always believe in uh, in fairness, you know, and that is uh, how I, so if I, if I don't think I made something, then uh, I'll tell, I'll be the first person to tell myself that, no, you don't, you don't deserve this, you know, so okay so let's bring it um, let's bring it to my own experience nothing nothing like that okay so let's bring it to a lot of the things that happen with today's players uh branding okay. has become like the mainstay of football or sports generally so when you look at people like uh, lebron james steph curry um you know kevin durant in basketball you look at ellen Ireland, mbappe the amazing thing about ellen Ireland is it's not like he's played for a big club now pardon me when i say that i'm not trying to say that borussia dot is not a big club after all they won the 1997 uefa champions league uh with las and, and summer and the rest of mm -hmm. them but in current terms like when you talk about the big big club and he's not won anything, not even at youth level. But when you mention Ellen Allen, you almost cannot put 
players like uh, Victor Sime, Paul Onwachu, uh, Ivo Kelechi and Aaron Acho. These are players that have won the Under-17 World Cup. These are players that have played in multiple leagues. You can't put them in the same sentence. And if you look carefully, it's the branding. What people say about them off the field, what they say about them on social media. How is it that the average Nigerian player does not pull that kind of brand command? Well, I think um, that is something that, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, some, it's, a, it's a good point. It's a good point. But I don't uh, have such a package through some people that are managing him. You know, I think it's just a matter of uh, um, interest. It's a matter of interest. So now, uh, like I was saying, there is bias, you know, against African players, you know. So most times when, uh, okay, let me just go back few years without when there was no Instagram, when there was no uh, social media. Let's say there was Facebook, but Instagram, there was no Instagram, you know. Yeah. During that time, there was still bias. Yes. There was nothing like Instagram, there was nothing like, uh, 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 I don't know, all this snap that was that, you know, people easily use now. Uh, their, their products or whatever they want to to, to push, you know. So uh, I just think it is just a bias against African players that that makes us look to European players, you know. And clearly, I won't say that Haaland and uh, Sime are in the same level right now. You know, you can always look. You know, by doing where they are and everything also, it is very obvious, very clear also. So, ways you can always see why some of those players are where they are in some cases. But in some, and also see why, you know, uh, the African players are where they are. But in many things, I think that bias is always there. And for now, it will still continue to be there to new players. Okay, so... Uh what can we do to change that bias because let's be very honest here technology came to give us a level playing field i agree with what you said about the time where there was no social media there was no you know the, the, it's just the same way in lagos now i played football in worry makiwa i played football in worry and potakot i played for sharks of potakot and then yeah. eagles mean before i went to play in sweden you guys mm -hmm. played in lagos back then i remember when i was playing for sharks mm -hmm. there's this thing we used to say that mm. the nigerian press always talk about lagos players if you know they play for lagos this is how we used to say it if you know they play for mm. lagos you know they play mm. football okay so great players like which no that's bias. that's the bias good now I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this i'm going somewhere with this People like them in the room, they have to fight their way to get to the top. People like them can't want to call them mobile mobile But the Lagos player, you will play mm -hmm. in Lagos, you just get like news every time. But that's because there was no level playing field. Today there's level playing field. If I want to be famous, I will do everything mm. that the other person is doing legally. Okay. So if he's on social media, I'm going to be on social media. If he's on Instagram, I'm going to be on Instagram. Mm -hmm. If he's on Twitter, I'm going to be on Twitter. Yeah. If he's if he's going to force people's hand to trend on Facebook, I'm going to be there as well. In other words, I will match you with anything you do off the field. And then let's go on the field and also prove ourselves on the field. Mm. Do you think that the African the average African player or focus on Nigerian players now? The average Nigerian player takes their time to say, look, I don't play the ball finish you, but let's cut a clip of me and put it out there. And, you know, get influencers to push it as loud as possible. Because those things are important, whether you like it or not. These tools are there for us to make life easy for us. Do you think that the average African or Nigerian players are yes. doing that? I think uh, that is happening right now. You know, uh, we took I think a lot of African players are taking advantage of that. That you know, social uh, media, their own, uh, one way or the other, pushing their brands. You know, so I think that is actually happening. You know, that is really happening. Uh, but uh, for as long as you know, we will still somehow look inferior. 
you know, to all this uh, in 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 the uh, you know where where we are in the clean field, you know, African players for sure. We still we, we we still kind of look inferior, you know, to uh, European players. Why do we look it's, inferior to it's, European players? It's just something that I don't know. Okay, now let's look at the fact that uh, somehow we 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 are not you know okay let's look at Haaland and Osime for example yeah. you know uh Haaland for example uh in, in Europe right yeah Osime until 17 years old nobody knew him right whereas Haaland has been playing maybe since uh under 14 under 15 we understand from Norway uh, I was saying that the, the the best way to go about that, I think, is to develop our grassroots football. You know, to so uh, for example, when you have a player at 14 that you can, can already discover his talent and is already everywhere, everybody could see that. You know, it's different from when you are lucky at. 16 then you play the national team under 17 and then that is when people start seeing you you know so we have a lot of that is about three years difference already that you know many times uh, you can't buy anything uh, you can you, money can't buy that time that you know he has the, the advantage he has, he has over the the african player that, that until maybe 17 18 nobody will you know, so many times, even if, uh, a player like Osime, for example, is just lucky. You know, just like many of others that are that are played in the under seventeen, right? So if they had the chance also to be platform where you can see them already at fourteen, imagine at fourteen uh, already the you know they have been seen they are playing uh, already in, in in big clubs and you know uh yeah it will it will definitely be different it will be different and they will start seeing that talent from that age and people will start talking about them you know but i think everything still go back uh still go back uh, go back to to the fact that we have to develop our grassroots and eventually try to also you know develop our league very well because the young league right now you still go there and sometimes it's difficult to even scout players uh, they, you know those are the issues I think uh, are having all these kind of effects on, on our players okay so uh, there, there are two more I, I, I'm going to beg you I say this that this interview we will do it again maybe not today but in the future and and get it a clean one I like my interview okay. being clean but I mean we're still talking I can hear you so let yeah. me ask you this there is this thing that always mm -hmm. bother me about ex Nigerian footballers the only job that okay. they seem to have is either their coaches and the coaching job is just for the national team or they want to be football agents. Apart from maybe Mike Emena Law okay. and now uh, Sheyo Lofinjana who works as the pathway manager at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Everybody that is an ex-footballer seems to want to just become a coach or an agent. Is there no other pathway to life after football apart from those two jobs? Well, I think I believe there is, you know. Uh, but you know, um, <laughs> football is passion, right? Football is, is our passion, and we love football. So sometimes you, you just you are just looking for something that will keep you in that, you know, uh, in that surrounding, in that environment. You want to just, you know, uh, still uh, be associated with the same people, but. On a different level, you know. So I think number one, that is at least for for myself, I think that is num the number one thing that drives me, you know, towards uh, being an agent. You know, so uh, I, I'm sure that you know 
when you do something for a long time and then you know uh, it's, it's, it's as it's as passionate as football uh, you want to remain somehow in the in the environment you know so uh, being uh, be it being a coach or or an agent or or a sports director you know, you know, uh, a scout or whatever, you know, you, you are still in the in the football environment. You are still in the football, you know. So but I think that is that is just the the, the thing that I, I believe drives people, you know, ex players towards becoming uh, either a coach or an agent. You just want to, you, you just you, you 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 don't want to, you know, you still want to be in that environment. You still want to to be talking about football. You still want to be involved somehow in football, you know. So. I believe that is that is why that the problem that I've always battled with. Footballers come upon money okay. in huge sums. Like you hear, okay, take for instance, you were signed uh, to Atlanta, seven point six million. Uh, there was the blind um, uh, bid for you, three point three million. Which, if you put the, the previous three point three million together, is six point six point six million. You know the plenty salaries, but five years after their career, majority of them, and that does not include you and a few others, but majority of them become so broke they are looking like like they are suffering. Why do footballers who see mm. such huge amounts of money end up being broke very fast? Uh, I think uh, sometimes that has to do with you know the people you have around you. I think that is number one key, I believe, uh, factor, you know. And then, and number two, feel about people around you because, you know, it depends on what you actually use the money, you know, uh, to do. So most times people go into wrong investments, you know. Uh, let's look at it from the angle of, uh, let's come to the national team, the Super Eagles of Nigeria. I've always insisted that uh, okay. there is no balance to the team. We have only one goalkeeper and it's still an upcoming goalkeeper. Unlike in past where you have, there is Peter Rofa, who's the mainstay of the goalkeepers, but then there is Wilfred Agbonibare, there is Aloy Agu, who can come in as backup, there is David Ungodiga. After that, you have Ike Shoromu as the mainstay, then you have Abiodun Barua, and then Vincent Yama. Also, you have Delia Yenuba and the rest of them. Uh, in, in today's Super Eagles, you have only one guy who is also an upcoming younger keeper, Maduka Okoye, and then the others who are just peripheral. And then in the first two, we have Oki okay, three center back, Tristan Kong, Leon Balugu, and uh, Kenneth Omeru. Uh, the others are neither here nor there. Then the full back position. In midfield, we have only one and a half midfielder. Now, let me explain that bit to you. We have Wilfred Ndidi, who is world class, by anybody's standard, world class. Uh, the half is Joe Aribo. He's not there yet. He's not really played in big games, but you could see his potential. You, you could see his talent. You could see his potentials. You could say, this guy have everything it takes. But, uh, I, I'm sorry, but, I mean, coming from a former footballer like me, people will say you shouldn't be saying this, but let's call it what it is. I do not reckon with Alex Iwobi as a midfielder. And I also think that, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, Organica Retibo mm -hmm. is a support striker, not really a midfielder, because he doesn't have those passes, those penetrating passes, those, you know, decision-making moments where you think this is how the game would change. But in attack, we are sport for choice. We In Africa today, we have the most number of attackers who are in form. As a former footballer, as somebody who is now an agent, what do you attribute this kind of situation to? And how would what kind of headache does the coach of the national team gonna throw have right now? Uh, well, uh, I think um, we as a country, you know, I would like to. We are talented. I mean, we have so many talents. You know, we have so many. Talents, and I think the headache of the of the coach is always to be able. I think that the his headache will be always to be able to put out the best at every point in time, which uh, sometimes people goes of our own system. You know, uh, for example, normally you know uh, when you're in Europe. You know, I remember when I was playing then, you know, sometimes my own invitation letter would have arrived to me 
the uh, one week every other European players, you know. Uh, you know, can, can, you, can, you, can you say that again? Can you say that again? Can you say that again? I didn't get to hear your invitation letter. Would what would arrive maybe one week earlier before the others? Okay, so now other European players they always they, they I mean, their selection their list will always come out after the last match of of the league, you know, before, before that. Uh, uh, before they, they move to the camp. So, uh, my point, my reason for saying that is that they always wait to see the, the best players that are in form until the last minute, you know. But in Africa, our own system, of course, unfortunately doesn't permit us, maybe because for now we are still not well, well organized, you know. So, selection, I think, plays a major role you know, in that aspect, you know, so, uh, for us to, um, I think we, we have some good players, uh, we have some good players, it is just a matter of the coach uh, deciding on how you want to play the players, you know, you always have a, a, a group of players and then, you know, for example, if you want to play the 4 4 2, if you want to play the 4 3 3, you know, that depends on the players that you invite and those that are inform and how you want to confront the opponent you know so uh, uh, i believe the biggest headache for the coach would be selection you know selection i think is is uh, is one one key thing that uh, if they can always get it right because we, sincerely i don't think we don't i don't believe that we don't have good talents we definitely have we have uh, great midfielders that are playing in good clubs. Of course, you know, uh, everybody can see a player differently, but I think a coach knows what he wants, or if he knows what he wants, he can always, you know, play them together however he wants. Because the good thing about our national team is that we have so many players that can play in different formations, you know. So, selection, I think, is the main uh, problem that. That or the main headache, let me say, or the main issue that the coach can have. Okay, so I want to put you on the spot now. I want to make you gonna draw for once. Uh, there, okay. is a, there is a terrible argument that have been erupting everywhere. Victor Sime okay. is a leading striker in the national team, top goal scorer in the qualifiers. Not really have a great Ooh. season in Italy. Just beginning to come into his character and his element now. But then there is yes. Simi Wanko also plays in Italy. It's got, I mean, it's got more goals than any other player, including my favorite, Obafemi Martins. There is uh, mm. Paul Onwachu, 30 goals plus, winning the FA Cup yes. in Belgium. You are going to draw. You are going to pick your mm. two strikers. Kelechi Anacho is in form mm. as well. Now, Genotro normally, yes. the German Genotro, Franco German Genotro prefers the Kelechi Anacho and Osime. But the, 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 mm. the public the public court, the public jury is saying, why not play Simi and Onuachu because of their current form and goals? You are going to draw. What would mm. you do? Would you stay with Osime and Hianacho, or you would uh, listen to the crowd and play Simi? And uh, Paul Onwachu. Okay, so uh, first of all, I think I will first want to have them all in the camp first. So when I have them in the camp, I as a coach, I will have to look at my next opponent. So now, looking at my next opponent, <laughs> that, that will determine how I will play. So now, I believe that some of those players, they, they are not compatible, you know, they can't play together. So, I think the player like Simi and Paul shouldn't play together. I believe that Osime can play with anybody in the attack. Kelechi can play with anybody. So, I can have the starting list to include uh, I would prefer right now. I would prefer the starting list to include uh, maybe uh, Kelechi and Osime because of uh, the uh, because of the level of confidence they already have in the national team, right? Uh, and then I will still have Paul and Simi for sure 
in my team because I know they are doing well in their clubs and for sure they, they have to be, they should be in the list. So uh, my own will be to have them and then at the point where I feel I would need them, during the trainings you'll be able to see a lot more also, you know, before the matches. So I think I will still go with, like I said, Usime and uh, Kenichi, but I will definitely have those two or uh, those other two in the, in the in the team for sure. Okay, just so, as backup, you know. Thank you very much. Uh, you seem to have seen it from my own angle as well. Now there is this conversation that always comes up. They said that uh, the saying, the rumor mill says that retired footballers only get together when they want to carry women and drink. Re retired footballers, <laughs> retired footballers. I've never, especially in Africa, I've never been able to come together. Like you see musicians and comedians come together like, okay, they want to do a project together. Uh, there is a charity foundation. There is a school project that they want to do. The only thing that retired footballers in, like, from Nigerians do is play novelty match, carry women, uh, collect money from politicians, and drink beer. Why is it like yeah. that? Especially knowing that the game of football, the first thing that football teaches you is togetherness, team effort, unity, uh, 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 yeah. accepting different diversity and coming together to build something. How is it that at retirement, this ideology dies? Footballers can no longer come together. There is no history, actually, in Africa of footballers coming together to pursue a good cause, a project. It is always to your tent, O Israel. Every man for himself, God for all. Why is it like that? Uh, I believe it is just uh, uh, a football... I don't know if it's a football thing or it is... I don't know. Because, sincerely, I can also tell you that I've played in many clubs with many players, but it is only when I maybe have something to really do that I or they, if I meet them you know that I call you know so most times we are we are like colleagues you know and then later you can have some friends also but sincerely uh, at least from my own experience uh, we, we were mostly or uh, yeah it's mostly about being colleagues and then you make some really good friends out of uh, as you as you as you move on, but uh, I don't I don't think there is real friendship. Sometimes you know there's it's just that you are in the same team and you know you, you you deal with each other when you are together and then when you are away everybody to to themselves you know. But I, I, I you know the question of uh, why not try to do something together? I think it's just also because in Africa, sincerely. Uh, we are far behind, you know. I would like to. We are far behind, you know, because a lot of things that I, I believe that uh, uh, could be done, you know, because experience also, you know, uh, uh, I think matters a lot, you know, in anything, right? So uh, I believe that there, there is so much that you know uh, we ex players can can also contribute. You know, to to developing our football, but you know, I believe that in some cases uh, we are not given the chance, and in some cases, I for once, for one, I, I I don't I don't think I I want to go through that stress of you know uh, uh, trying to do something and then people blocking you, don't do, you know. So, so I don't think there is that encouragement, you know, to to even uh, push us to try to do something, you know, except for maybe those that have that, you know, maybe close connections with politicians. <laughs> I will just be blunt. So I think the issue is just that we don't, we, I mean, uh, I don't know, things are, we are not just in a good system that encourages such. All right, thank you very much, uh, Stephen I. Odile Wakiwa, uh, the Tiger of Lagos. Coming up next is... Uh, Emmanuel Sebastian with uh, the Nigerian Players GPS show. It's a show that spotlights every Nigerian player anywhere in the world. Uh, so uh, we can't get past this and some of these players. But before I let you go, since Emmanuel Sebastian is in the studio, how many players yeah. do you manage currently and where are these players? 
playing across the European space? So, right now, I have about uh, 13 players that I manage. Wow. Um, you know, uh, I have um, Onazi, uh, Uchiago, Blessing, Ileke, Adeni James, Musa Mohamed, uh, Ezekiel uh, Matthias Urusi. They are all in Europe. I have uh, some Ghanaians also. Uh, one Ghanaian, I have Bede uh, Osuji uh, Amarachi is in Israel, um, Joshua PJ in uh, Latvia, you know, so yeah, I mean, there's this set that I just signed, is a young player that right now I'm trying to fix him somewhere, you know, so yeah, I have these players right now that I, that I, so uh obviously mostly all in Europe. All okay. in Europe. Obviously, uh Emmanuel Sebastian will be reaching out to you so that he can connect with all of these your players and uh, maybe okay. get to talk to them on his segment on his show because his show focuses on Nigerian players wherever they are playing across the beautiful world of football. Thank you very much, uh the okay. Tiger of Lagos or uh, La Pantera de la Lagos, right? That's how you call uh, it. La Pantera de Lagos. <laughs> okay, La Pantera de Lagos. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I mean, if I want to translate yeah, that directly, is the Lagos Panther. Mm -hmm. The Lagos Panther. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. My my Italian language is still still there. Like, it's, it's still, still, still it's still intact. Yeah. yeah still I intact. think uh, Bula FM then they they also you know uh, I think they were the ones that actually gave me that uh, Pante, uh, that the the Tiger, the Tiger of Lagos. You know, okay. Because I think like you said, they always give you know nicknames to to play as then. Yeah. So. They are my former employers. I, I worked there for like thirteen years, so I understand. <laughs> I think it's a bit bad. Yeah. It's a bit bad. You like it. Okay, so thank you very much for your yeah. time on the show. We will have time to speak again, and uh, hopefully during the African Nations Cup, you would give us your take on matches as they go. But God bless you, and uh, I wish all your players and your manage the very best of success. And I hope that you will create an opportunity for them, for them to create a brand image and brand management outside of the field of play. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.